Let's get started, everybody. Um, first, I want to introduce myself. I am Marguerite Heber. I am Epic's Campus and Communications Engagement Manager. Um, I run this series, this career series that we started last year uh, during the pandemic. We did a virtual series and we brought it back again this year. Um, and if you guys aren't familiar with Epic, um, we are an interdisciplinary hub um, for energy and environmental work across campus. So we have economists, policy analysts, business experts, um, all from all across campus. So the Harris Law School um, booth all over. And our faculty affiliates work together to bring robust and cross-cutting research to the forefront of the global energy debate. Um, so today we are gonna have a 30 minute moderated Q&A between myself and our presenter. And then we will um, do a 30 minute uh, Q&A with the audience. So start thinking of your questions. Um, logistically, we're gonna ask that you submit any technical issues that you're having in the Q&A box. And then um, during the Q&A port with the um, attendees, we are going to have you ask questions by raising your hand. The chat box is disabled right now. Um, I'm going to unmute you and then you will have to accept that unmute to speak. Um, and then you will introduce yourself, say your name, um, what year you are, what school you're in, um, and then you can go ahead and ask your question. And then I will mute you after you are done. Um, and yeah, so we are going to get started. So I'm going to have um, our presenter introduce herself, give a quick overview, and then we will get started with questions for me. All right. Let's go. Awesome. Thanks, Margaret. Uh, hi, everyone. I can't see you all, but yeah, hope to see you in the Q&A section. Uh, I'm Sushmita. Uh, I work with the World Bank as a climate and energy consultant. Uh, I've been with the bank, I think, just three days shy of like six months. <laughs> uh, been, I work across different teams, uh, mostly working the teams of climate uh, resilience, uh, climate risk assessments as well as uh, energy efficient cooling um, technology, that kind of stuff. Uh, I'll talk more about it with, as Margaret and I speak uh, over the next hour or so. Um, yeah, and my background, just to give like a quick uh, overview of my background. Uh, I studied in New Chicago, did the MS in environmental science and policy in the Harris uh, School. Uh, prior to that, I had been working um, in the public sector as well as academic and um, nonprofit or think tanks, mostly on energy, environment, economics, uh, urban development, those kind of stuff. Uh, with a lot of research, academic and public policy as well. Uh, but I had also studied uh, economics for my grad studies as well as my undergrad. Uh, so that's the kind of background I come with. Um, yeah, feel free to go ahead, Margaret. All right. Uh, so we'll first start, start with your current role, um, and then we'll kind of backtrack to your experience at Harris and mm -hmm. um, other experiences. So very generally, um, what does your regular day look like? What are your main responsibilities? What are you in charge of? Uh, do you have lots of meetings? How does that look for you? Yeah, uh, now with the pandemic even more so, yeah. So my day typically, it has a lot of meetings or attending seminars or BBLs or workshops, that kind of stuff. Uh, and parallelly also like helping with project management and that could be research, that could be creating knowledge products, uh, could also be like portfolio management, looking the finances uh, into funding that we have provided to different teams across the globe and kind of assessing it where we are at and how deliverables are. So I'm sort of there assisting with everything, supporting with all of these activities that goes on, but I can delve more into more details Okay. Um, organizational structure wise, um, how does your team look? Um, are there a lot of you? Are you a small team? Uh, do you have um, weekly or daily check ins? How does that look? Uh, so I can speak for my team and I'm not sure how it works for other other teams. And also because I haven't been to the office working remotely. And so Probably I would have more information had I been there. Uh, so for me, I work closely with two teams. One is the climate team and one is the energy efficient uh, cooling team, which is like a sub team of the energy sector management assistance program, which is a larger program for energy sector management. Uh, and what and it's in short, it's called SMAP. And what SMAP really does is uh, basically help with a lot of technical assistance 
and also help mobilize funds for technical assistance for different uh, teams in at the country level, uh, something on those lines. So that team is we are we are four of us, main core team, and then we have uh, you, we have collaborative work across different teams. Like you have the health sector where we work closely with, or agriculture team we work closely with. But our core cooling team within SMAP, the sub cooling that we have four of us, it's a senior economist, a specialist, and another consultant. And the other team that I work with is the climate team, where it's a, a senior climate specialist, and then there is also a climate, uh, a, a senior energy specialist. And I work very closely with them. Um, they're yeah, helping them with uh, all the technical work that needs to be done. But this is not necessarily how the bank really operates. I, that, like I said, uh, informally there are like when we when I from what I've gathered uh, talking to colleagues is that there are three main um, verticals you can say a research uh, an operation and then on hybrid a hybrid of both research and operations so yeah that's how the bank looks like but then it also has like very focused uh, global practices there are probably 16 of those like it's quite a wide range of uh, practices yeah that's how it is right um what are some big projects that the the cooling team or the other climate team um mm -hmm. what are some big projects you're working on right now um or ones that you've just recently finished up i know you haven't been there that long but um <laughs> uh what what is it on the docket right now okay yeah I, yeah for six months i think there has been a lot of projects that that have come my way and usually they come with like very hard very tight deadlines oh uh, one as soon as i joined in was like a it, it's a proposal that we created and we wanted funding from the Green Climate Fund and we were uh, basically trying to create a project around uh, cooling needs, meeting cooling needs for high risk countries who are going to have like very uh, more, more extreme numbers of heat hot days and then they, were, they are going to need some cooling technology. Uh, and we and me as a consultant would have to was helping my climate, senior climate specialist with making the climate rational around why we are saying we need this solution. So basically looking at climate models, oh, what's relevant from this climate model? What can we ascertain around how many cooling days we would need in the coming years uh, and how this project is like such a requirement given the climate rational. So we were working mainly on the climate rational of the project. So, so that's one of them. So we, we have done, I think our project got through. So pretty excited about that, that, that came in last week. Uh, and on the other hand, with the energy team and the cooling team, uh, mainly working around um, portfolio management. Uh, so we have invested around uh, on 31 project teams spread across different countries. Um, and we are trying to assess what were the deliverables and how it aligns to our objective of SMAP cooling teams objective around uh, making sure there's sustainable cooling, it's energy efficient, it's climate friendly, all of those. And if they need any technical assistance from us, then we are there to help them. Uh, but we also review what work they've done. So that kind of stuff. So that's an ongoing process, but it's like a full on, uh, yeah, full on project that's going on, uh, apart from some other side project uh, that's there. Uh, and we meet uh, once in two weeks, it's a bi-weekly meeting, but otherwise me and my immediate boss, we check in almost every week. And, and it's a very chilled out kind of setting. So we can just reach out over emails and we're also talking about, hey, I, have you gone for a run? So that kind of stuff too. Like you would imagine it's like everything is going to be only about work, but that's not necessarily the case, depending on the team, of course. Yeah, awesome. Um, so with these projects, have you discovered any new skills that you've developed as a professional since taking on this role? Or are there any skills that you learned at school here at Harris that you've mm -hmm. uh, definitely been able to apply? Yeah, uh, so yeah, mix of both. Um, in terms of new skills, I would say knowledge, a lot of knowledge I've gathered from just working across teams and different uh, topics. Uh, for instance, just cooling itself. I, I, had, I, wasn't, um, I hadn't appreciated the amount of work that goes into it, learned new concepts like cooling as a service, like that's not something I had heard before, like software as a service is a thing. Uh, cooling as a service is uh, very, very popular in African countries where you don't want food wastage to occur. So then you ha and then people don't have the means to kind of uh, invest on a cooling equipment. So then a service provider does that and then you pay them like a prepaid and then like for per crate of vegetables or whatever food products you have, 
the KPD pay for it. And then that's a whole different business. So those are things I'd never heard of. So yeah, I've never heard of that either. Very yeah, cool. Yeah. yeah. So that kind of stuff uh, in terms of what I learned from Harris, uh, I mean, I, I did uh, attend classes in the geophysical science apart from Harris and Harris definitely was really great for environmental economics policy. Yes. And then the science aspect, which was in the geophysical and geography departments, those are pretty cool. Those came handy, especially my environmental chemistry class around refrigerants. So now I'm using that and trying to understand, oh, these are the kind of a global warming potential um, refrigerants that shouldn't be used and they're phasing out. Though I didn't know how much progress has been made already since the Montreal Protocol and then uh, the Kigali Amendment. Um, so yeah, so those skills are useful. The economics part was also useful because uh, there is a current, uh, a whole new document has come around uh, 87 pages. We're trying to review it. Um, and that's that revolves around um, accounting for climate resilience in power inv investment projects. And this is an economic analysis, uh, analysis of the power investment projects. So like a good understanding of environmental economics is, is like really useful. So. OK. Um. So what do you like best so far about working there and what have you found to be the most challenging part? Uh, the most challenging part? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> time management for sure. Um, so what I really, really love about it is because I am that person who really likes to read across different topics. Um, and so the, the bank offer gives you that kind of opportunity having to work across teams, across different uh, topics, subtopics, it really gives you a wide breadth of knowledge that you, you can have access to. Also access to team members if you were really interested in working in a certain sector, there is there are no bars or near any obstacles for you to reach out to other teams and say, hey, do you have something around this line? I'd be interested to you know, uh, work along, work with you along these lines. So that's like really, really cool. I really like that about the bank. Um, maybe some teams are more rigid. I am not sure about that, but at least my team has been like really supportive and flexible and they're pretty cool. Um, and the challenging part definitely has been trying to manage time across different projects. You can really get carried away, uh, invest too much time into one project, whereas other projects also require equal attention from you. So that's been like a struggle, but yeah, it's working well so far. <laughs> Now, can you talk more about your, your path to the World Bank and how you got there? Um, mm -hmm. Is this something that you had planned or uh, the opportunity just kind of arose? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, the so I had worked in the energy environment research sector. So def definitely the World Bank was always there in the radar, like some, some place where I really wanted to end up in. Um, and I guess, Terry, where I first worked at the, the Energy and Resources Institute, that's where we were working for the bank as a consultant, like helping them with technical assessments. That's where the seed, uh, the plant was, what do you say? It was, the idea was seeded there. Uh, that's in 2011, I'm talking about. And then over time, I um, made a conscious effort to move towards it. And the ESB program definitely in Harris really helped. Um, but getting through the bank is, is quite a struggle. It's not really easy to get in as an outsider. And so a lot of uh, networking and a lot of um, doing coffee chats is like really, really important to make sure that people in the bank know you and to go through like the proper channel. Like for instance, they have openings on their website, but those are really, really hard to get through. So you want to start with smaller steps, uh, which is to get like a short term consultancy or an internship. And for that, I would say, like, just reach out to people out there. People are open to conversations and and you can always present uh, like the candidate can present themselves at, like whatever their strength is. And if if people in the bank sees the passion and the kind of uh, skill sets that, uh, that's required in the bank, I think people are open to hiring them for an STC or for an internship. Great. Um, now you um, before going to Harris, um, you mm -hmm. were in the professional world. Um, how long between your undergrad and um, going to Harris? How long were you um, working? Mm, uh, I was working for six and a half, seven years, I would say, I think. 
Yeah. Okay, so you had some good experience before yeah. coming to Harris. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so let's move into the Harris uh, part of our discussion. Yeah. Um, so while you were there, uh, did you mm -hmm. know exactly what you wanted to do after graduating? Like, did you know that um, World Bank was something you were aspiring to at that point or very open to, to other options? I know we kind of touched on this a little bit already. Yeah, um, definitely World Bank was like one of my main objectives, but not the only one. I was also open to joining like private energy sectors because the private energy sector is something that I haven't worked direct. I mean, I've worked in terms of research, but haven't been a part of the private energy sector. Uh, that was something I was open to as well. Um, but yeah, but last year, especially with the Trump administration, energy environment wasn't so much of a focus So the industry didn't have that many openings as compared to say when the Biden administration took over and climate change became like a, in, an important part of the agenda. And then now you have way more openings. So yeah, so I was definitely open to those options, but the bank remained like one of my main objectives. Yeah. Great. Um, so overall, I know it's a hard to distill down, you know, what you learned at Harris into like a few sentences, but can you explain a little bit about what skills really helped you um, at World Bank or just in general as a professional in the energy world? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, first of all, the main reason I came to Harris was the ESP program, which isn't there right now. It's been installed uh, for some administrative reasons. Uh, but the thing about the MSESP program uh, and the reason why I joined Harris was that it had a robust uh, environmental science uh, section as well as a policy part of it. And so the, envi so the environmental economics class by Steve Sikala, he, I think he's not around in uh, Chicago anymore. Um, Amarjina's international climate policy, uh, Rob Rosner's of, uh, policy, physics and technology, I think um, energy technology especially. So those kind of mix of studies, like energy economics, environmental economics, the tech, uh, uh, energy technology policy, that kind of stuff, that was like really, really useful for my understanding so because those were parts I felt I lacked, especially the technical part of it, of having done economics, but not done like in core environmental science. Um, so Harris also gave that opportunity to take courses outside it uh, so the geophysical geography departments those are pretty cool uh, so those courses like environmental chemistry i think everyone should go through it once if they want to be the energy environment sector it's really really good to have uh, a good understanding the foundation uh for doing further work on it um the data science uh, classes in harris those were also pretty cool uh, there's jeff levy's class it's like a three course series three or four. Oh, i had signed up for that python programming at it was a good tool to use because that was useful for my other coursework uh, where I did environmental data science practicum with in the geophysical science department, uh, but haven't really used here uh, in the bank. Uh, but I think it's a nice tool to have, a nice skill to have because uh, going forward, I think we would see more of data science being used in the energy environment sector. So it, it's a good skill to have for sure. So, what did make you want to um, continue your education and come back to school? Um, can you describe that process about going from, you know, the working world back to school? Yeah, yeah, uh, of course. Um, so I had been in the development sector working and then work, like the last job I worked before joining Harris was working with j and we were doing RCTs around electricity distribution, smart energy meters, this kind of stuff. Uh, but somehow a part of me felt that I wasn't getting a full picture around the climate problem, uh, not having been exposed to the environmental science aspect, the science aspect of climate or energy environment. So that's the main reason why I came to Harris because that's probably one of the few programs which had both a good robust uh, combination of science as well as like public policy. So that's the reason why I came to Harris and I like totally worth it. <laughs> um. So then while you were at Harris, did you have a mentor or advisor that you worked with or someone who, I mean, even outside of Harris, um, who helped you or helped guide you in your career process? Um, I didn't have like a steady mentor, like, but I would reach out to 
people i reach out to professors so some names that pop up in my mind right now is definitely like amir jina is like very very creative in his way of thinking very encouraging very empowering um same goes for liz moyer in the Geo geophysical science department she her humans in earth system that class uh, i th it really changed my perspective and also i found the class to be really really informative and and she as a person it can be like very empowering she, nothing is like off limits like you can do this it's not that difficult she's very very encouraging so i found those things like really really helpful for me and like i couldn't have imagined doing the kind of environmental data science work that i was doing in her class like have people coming to harris um but outside uh, harris too like i don't know i mean some people might know already uh, there was uh, ken lee who was the epic india director i worked with him very closely while I was in JPAL. Um, so he has also been like a mentor to me. <laughs> like I consider him my mentor and I've spoken to him about career choices, about things to do. And he has been someone who has always instilled confidence and then how to approach interviews, that kind of stuff. But yeah, those people have been like really great presence in my life. Great. Um, and you've talked a, a handful about um, some of the courses you've taken. Do you have a favorite course that you think back on um, from your time at Harris? Oh, so hard. <laughs> okay. Um, hmm. uh, definitely Rob Rosner's class was really cool. Um, I think everyone should sign up for the International Climate Policy by Gina. I don't know if she, if he's offering it this uh, quarter. I or think it's in the winter quarter. Usually it's in the winter okay. quarter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So definitely someone should sign up for that. Uh, it has yeah that a lot of good information useful information information that's going to help uh, candidates um in not only getting ideas around what interests them but also like this whole big picture put together in a nice coursework i i think that's really that's a really good course work. although i was not a student for that course i was a ta but even I learned it all the same. Um, so I think that's definitely one of the good courses that Harris has. But also, I would say people should also go beyond Harris and look for courses in geophysical or geographical sciences. And the human uh, human in Earth system was a really cool one uh, with Liz Meyer. I don't know if she's offering it, uh, but yeah, that's a really, really good course. Great. Um, so going backwards a little bit more, um, I'm interested to hear a little bit more about the internships that you or fellowships that you might have done in the past. Um, mm -hmm. You worked for Epic as a DRW fellow. Um, mm -hmm. Can you first talk a little bit about that fellowship, uh, who you worked with and what you did? Yeah, yeah, cool. Uh, for the DRW fellowship, I think that was the first year coming into Harris. Uh, so I worked with uh, Professor um, Anand. Anand. <laughs> And uh, there were a couple of people from Harvard too who were working on the project. Um, so mostly helping around econometric analysis, running data codes, um, cleaning data, uh, pretty much standard. If, if you have worked in JPL, that would be like a standard work. Um, but yeah, a lot of learning in the process. Like for instance, I wasn't aware about some mining policies that had come uh, in India and how that was changing the behavior of uh, the actors, especially the miners. So th that was an interesting study. Um, then I think there was also there was also the um, what was it the PM emission trading scheme. But I was very briefly involved in the project where the project was almost done, and the next phase was to launch it as a market, um, and then basically trying to look at the synthesis of the report and creating something for policymakers. So that was one. Um, yeah, those were I think the two main projects. And then after that, I for my summer internship, I worked. Uh, with Anand further and Amir was also in the project um, that was the uh, I think it was the cool rooftop project so basically they were using a certain paint that would reduce um, supposed to reduce ambient temperature um, for the treatment households uh, but we didn't really find that to be significant but that but there might have been there were good reasons why that might not have been the case but my role was mainly to do econometric analysis trying to understand the data and yeah so yeah those were my roles is there anything from that fellowship that um you've been able to carry with you um to now to the world bank or just in general um i think again un un understanding policy and um solutions 
uh, was definitely a part of the econometric analysis, something that I had been doing in my economics undergrad, grad, and so that wasn't something new to me. But what was definitely new was uh, interventions and how human behavior, um, how it works in terms of uh, when you have these kind of solutions, whether you can you can scale up or not, those kind of stuff uh, that was insightful from those projects. Great. Um, so now looking forward, um, how do you envision your career path from here? Um, do you expect to just stay at WorldLink long term? or do you have other sites on other um, organizations? Um, as of now, since I just recently joined the bank, uh, I'm looking forward to stick around for a bit, uh, get a better sense around dif different development projects that's there. Try to find, like, although I have my multiple interests, I'll try to like narrow it down to a couple of them and try to specialize in those uh, while also having continued interests across a wide variety of subjects. Uh, so I guess, yeah, I plan to stick around for a bit, but. Uh, I'll say where where my interest lies in a few years down the line. Absolutely. Um, so do you have an example of what your dream job would be, even if it doesn't truly exist? Um, if you could make it happen, what would your dream job be? Oh, this is so hard. This is, this is something I keep asking myself. What do I really want? A uh, constant question. Um, oh, well, definitely one thing that, um, is on my mind is impact um, and the World Bank in many ways fulfills that. Uh, it's a huge impact, big projects, public sector, government being able to influence at the highest level um, and the bank being able to fund those projects, innovative projects, creating markets where, they, where it doesn't exist, uh, creative solutions. I think that part is kind of taken care of at the bank in, in most parts and that's that's been a dream and that's being fulfilled right now as I see. Uh, but apart from that, I would also like to be really involved um, in terms of operations, which I haven't at the present, where I can actually see how those research translate into actual projects on the field and how how do governments really work around those? Uh, how does it, what does it mean on the field? Um, those are things which I don't think we are very well acquainted with at this level. Uh, maybe country teams are more aware of those. Um, but yeah, I would like to see myself get more involved around working with the government, trying to understand uh, what are the challenges really, instead of just reading it and then seeing how things can be resolved. I don't know, through, <laughs> through I don't know, talks, discussions. Um, yeah, they can kind of stuff. All right. Um, and what advice would you give students who are starting to think about their futures? Um, I I would definitely say having passion makes a ton of a difference. And the skills, you can always get skills at, on the job. Um, skills is something that you shouldn't worry too much about. I think it's uh, really, really important to understand what you really like and also what you don't really like. And if what you don't really like, better not to venture in those, but at least the things that you like. Uh, and I think things just work out because you, if you really like something, you're going to skill yourself uh, towards that direction. And I don't think skills are such an impediment, especially if you're already doing college you're, or you're doing a master's, you have enough skills to understand and as, as an adult um, to kind of work on these uh, issues. And, and, and you just need to find your uh, heart in it. That's it. And last question before we go to Q&A. Um, mm -hmm. Do you advise, have any advice for doing interviews, especially now? I think a lot more are being done virtually. Um, mm -hmm. So you're not having that in-person interaction. Uh, do you yeah. have any advice on that? Yeah, um, definitely. Um, especially so the the, so the beginning point, which is to get hold of people to talk to you, uh, it's really, really hard. But uh, but even so, like you, one shouldn't be disheartened by that. Even if you get one out of 10 requests, that's 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 a good uh, hit. Um, so reach out to people based on the interest that you have. Like go to LinkedIn or, or for instance, the World Bank has a lot of blogs around different topics. You found some writer, look them up on LinkedIn, found them request for a virtual coffee chat, like 30 minutes, just not to overwhelm the other person, 
and said, oh, hey, can I have like a 30 minute coffee chat? Um, and people are usually open to those. Uh, and 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 even even if they don't reply instantly, you can reach out to them two weeks after. That's that's a good enough time. Uh, and then introduce yourself and your passion about uh, the topics that you're interested in. Um, and then try to like to try to get a, a good understanding about the background of that person, what they have been working on, what is it about their work that you're interested in, and if you have questions around those. And those I think are helpful while having a conversation and the, uh, the other person, I mean, at least can see that you have done your homework and, and, and that I think that makes a difference for sure. Absolutely. Okay, we're gonna open to Q&A. Um, so again, uh, please raise your hand to ask a question. I will then unmute you. You'll need to accept that unmute to be able to speak. Um, Please say your name, your school, your year, um, and then go ahead and ask your question. I will then mute you after your question has been asked. Um, so the floor is open. And until someone decides to be the first person to ask a question, um, we're going to continue talking. Um, and I will look for someone to raise their hand. OK. All right, well, let's look at my um, List of list of questions that we can go back to. Um, so, with your coworkers at World Bank, um, are a lot were a lot of you on um, common career paths, or um, are people coming from all different types of backgrounds um, and studies? Uh, yeah, uh, I would say uh, it's a diverse set. Uh, but in the energy sector, I have come across more engineers. And then a fair bit of economists, um, those seem to be like the common theme, but that's not necessarily always the case, but at least in the energy sector, I've seen that's that's the case, but not to disheartened certain people who uh, might not have taken up engineering or economics. Um, definitely scope to like get through, through, I don't know, data science or statistics or, or even just under a good understanding of um, the macro, policies i think that kind of good understanding is also helpful and other skills are like very simple like an excel skill that's everyone knows that uh, or a tableau skill which is also it's almost like a powerpoint um so those kind of skills are definitely useful um being able to kind of synthesize information or uh, and also being able to speak about uh, issues i think those are uh, good skills to have and but yeah i definitely seen more engineers and economists Okay. Um, and then can you describe your the company culture? Uh, is it more relaxed, more uh, serious? Um, just how does that how does that look to you? And I know you haven't been in the office yet, but at least on the virtual side, how does that uh, come across? Yeah, uh, fortunately for me, uh, both my teams have been like very chilled around things. Um, give they give you um, I mean, they give you that, uh, I don't know, ownership, I would say, uh, that if you want to lead things, go ahead, feel free, give us ideas, we're happy to hear you out. Um, and and also like, for instance, oh, this is this, this is a meeting I, I really can't attend. And yeah, no, no big deal. You can just inform your supervisor. Um, so in terms of flexibility, I have had like 100% flexibility around and, and it's not as, uh, it's not straight jacket as I one would have imagined around the bank to be. Uh, yeah, but I'm sure it's like very team dependent, but mine have been like really, really flexible. <laughs> very nice. Um, and for our attendees right now, you can ask questions about anything. Um, it can be about um, before the World Bank, it can be about Harris, it can about, be about interviewing anything. The floor is open. So whatever you want to ask about, go ahead. Um, but again, we'll continue chatting until someone wants to be the first person. Um, yeah. Uh, are there any current issues and trends in the field that we should know about or be aware of that that cooling as a service thing sounded really cool? Yeah. Um, is there anything like that um, that we should know about? Uh, so there are certain things which I haven't followed deeply, but definitely keeps coming up across like say seminars or stuff like that. One is uh, hydrogen as a fuel. Um, then there's this whole debate on blue hydrogen versus green hydrogen. So basically hydrogen is an alternative fuel source. 
uh, that's there has been a couple of seminars already in my six months here where there has been conversation around those. One is electric vehicles. Electric vehicles, um, yeah, has been, yeah, if more. There is more push or push for it in the market and even in developing countries as well. So that's one very upcoming hot topic. Uh, and now we have kind of moved away from climate mitigation and it's more, mostly climate adaptation. Of course, we. I think at this point, I don't think we are, we will be able to mitigate, but we'll have to adapt uh, to the new um, realities um, with the climate extreme weather. Uh, uh, what are other topics? Um, uh, one good thing about the bank, I really, uh, this might be a little off topic, but what I've noticed in the bank is around almost every project has like a, like a gender component and a climate component, all projects. So that's really, really heartening to see uh, that whether this project has some any gender impact in terms of empowerment, whether that's economic empowerment or otherwise, uh, and also climate component, how does it really impact climate? Uh, so, so yeah, the bank is going in the right direction. That's great. We do have a question um, from Jennifer. So Jennifer, I'm going to allow you to talk. Hello, um, my name is Jennifer and I'm from Texas A&M University. And so right now I'm studying, you know, geology as an undergrad. And I was just wondering, like, um, and hoping to go into hydrology. So I was wondering if you had any, um, like, uh, if there were any, like, water security projects you were aware of that the World Bank is working on? Um, not that I'm aware of. That's because we are just too many, there are too many verticals. Um, but I'm pretty sure there, there would be, uh, we do have, water yeah we do have uh, a water vertical or a global practice i would imagine um definitely sh would be there yeah you can definitely look up uh, our website thank you and then uh, my second question is so uh, again i'm an undergrad and so mm -hmm. right now like my plan is to continue working on my technical hydrology classes and then probably take some environmental classes but is there anything else i can do just to kind of prepare myself to go into like environmental policy Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I, if climate policy is a course that's offered, uh, definitely take it up. Um, if modeling is your thing, then climate modeling can be really, really useful, really used for many of these infrastructure projects that the bank works uh, works in. Uh, someone with a climate modeling background is uh, that kind of skill is like really appreciated. So I would definitely, and also because I have some interest in modeling, so. Uh, if yeah, if I were back in undergrad, I would definitely sign up for a climate modeling class. Okay, and by climate modeling, you mean like GIS or is that something else? Oh, uh, GIS, yes. But basically, think about the IPCC, IPCC's AR, uh, the assessment reports and the kind of models they create. Try to uh, make use of those. Um, like for instance, they have taken into account. Uh, say the PM levels, aerosols, uh, CO2, and then what does it mean in terms of precipitation? What does it mean in terms of temperature? How much, what a longitudinal CO2 date, uh, emission would lead to how much, um, say, temperature rise in the next, I don't know, 50, 1600 years. So that kind of stuff, uh, that kind of understanding, that at least it's really useful for the climate um, global practice. Um, so yeah. And if thank you for your time. Interest, yeah, yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Thank you, Jennifer. Okay. Next, we have a question from Jeffrey. Uh, Go hi. ahead, Jeffrey. Hi, Sushmita. Um, thanks yeah, for hi. Uh, I'm a first year uh, Harris NPP student, and I'm also mm -hmm. interested in energy policy. Um, so you've mentioned that um, one of the uh, one of the points in comparing the levels to potential experiences is the I'm sorry, I, I couldn't. Yeah, I'm having a little trouble seconds. hearing yeah. you. You're cutting in and out a little bit. Can you try saying that again? Sorry. Yeah. So you've mentioned that um, the one of the more important things that's been guiding you throughout these different professional experiences has been your passion and what in your topic interest. So I was just um, curious to hear what has been your like major top topics or areas of interest that's been sort of navigating you through. All of these different professional experiences and how in any way has that changed um after working uh you said in academic research and then the fellowship at epic and now at the world bank right yeah thanks jeffrey um so 
So my first of all, my interest in climate change, I think, uh, I think it was ignited in my first uh, graduate studies in economics, uh, where I specialized in environment and resource economics, and that was 2009. And the Copenhagen, the Copenhagen COP had just happened in December, and then the university that I went to, Terry, they worked a lot in energy and resources, and the, the director was also um, the director general of IPCC. So we had a lot of influence from the UN and World Bank and people working in that sector coming to our university, giving lectures or having seminars. So that was like really, really useful. That's the first time I really got exposed to the climate change literature and issues. And that was there, that was sustained. And then I went on to work in different uh, sectors. And the climate change topic has remained, but not necessarily the subtopics, because I am, I feel that the climate change topic is like so wide and it it covers so many different sectors. It's almost impossible to like say, like at least for me, I find it really hard to just stick to one. I was like, oh, this 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 needs a concerted effort. It's across energy, it's environment, it's water, you, you name it. It's so many things. So the common link across has been climate change and in any form or in any sector that I can help uh, because I'm again very sector agnostic um that that has been helpful for me at least um and that also like somehow trickles down in, in my day-to-day -day life or at least reminding my dad hey switch off the light hey and that's that has that i've been doing like for more than 15 years now so yeah so that's been there that's that's there in every decision that i say uh, sorry uh, can i just ask a quick follow-up um yeah go ahead yeah and I, I was just wondering if you think uh sort of the amount of impact that you think you can that you that you bring to these sort of different sectors um do you think that there's a difference in how you approach the amount of impact the work you're doing um in academic research compared to what you're doing right now um so both have i think different level of impact like academic research definitely it's way more advanced than public policy research it's thinking in a way ahead in terms of public policy but again public policy has a lot of impact but takes a lot of time um and for things to for things to materialize on the ground um academic research is helpful in the sense that it gives you some direction uh, to public policy and then when it and when you do public policy you're seeing impacts in millions of lives so I feel both are really, really useful and both are impactful, but in very different ways. Uh, at least academic research starts the conversation or gives some direction. Right? Public policy is like the ultimate goal. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. No problem. Thank you, Jeffrey. All right. So, um... I'm going to ask one more question here, and if anyone else wants to raise their hand, please go ahead and do so. Um, so my last question is, were you involved in anything um, either out, during your time at Harris or not at Harris um, that added to your skills or interest in energy? So I'm talking about like um, young professional boards or uh, volunteering, nonprofit association, anything like that, that helped you um, advance your your interests and passions um the direct answer sadly is no uh but that's because i was also like really really occupied with the research fellowship uh, working and studying and then the quarter system <laughs> was a very different experience for me uh, and it was really really fast um and um that kind of uh, yeah i kind of really struggled with time management there uh, but whenever it was possible, I would attend a lot of seminars, uh, epic talk series, epic lunch, um, or, um, for instance, there were a few activities, I think, uh, what was it, the Harris Energy, there is a student association here. Uh, yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Energy and Environment yeah. Association. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. So I would attend a few of those meetings. They had some trivia that was fun, uh, do all those things. Um, so that was like... A, just a continuation of my interest, um, but not really, not the start of it. Yeah. That's fine, we're busy. Um, we do have a question from Rowan. I'm gonna allow you to talk. Okay, go ahead when you're ready. 
Uh, hi, I'm uh, Rohan Kramer Guha. I just graduated from the college in um, June of this year. I have questions about the landscape for en environmental uh, policy jobs. So what are the, I mean, several questions in one, but what are the companies that are growing the most right now? And what sort of, besides uh, World Bank, what sort of skills are they uh, looking for? And what are some ways to like stand out among the pool of applicants? Okay, um, hmm. that's, okay, I'll just try to answer one at a time. I might even get back to you for uh, what uh, what you said towards the end. Um, so the kind of organizations that say, I mean, it's a lot of nonprofit uh, research, uh, that kind of organizations, you can look at a WRI uh, for it. Uh, an organization like w, WRI is really, really great for someone who really wants to get hands on, like directly involved uh, in a lot of climate or related environmental topics. Uh, gives an in-depth uh, kind of uh, experience. Um, so at least from what I've heard of friends uh, who have worked there, they've had, um, it's an intensive kind of, uh, um, I mean, when you dive into any kind of topic, it's it's really helpful. You go deep into it instead of just going over the surface. So WRI, I have heard good stuff about Nature Conservancy, uh, but I've seen it's mostly nonprofits. I'm not too sure about environmental service for profit. Uh, maybe it would be like engineering advisory services uh, that I'm not too aware of. Um, but yeah, but in the public, I think in environmental policy, it would be mostly uh, not for profits, that kind of work or yeah, research organizations, think tanks. Um, in terms of standing out, um, again, lead with your passion, reach out to people, um, try to find something if like if it's something some work that any of the organization that you're interested in has done and it really appeals to you reach out to those persons who were directly involved in those projects uh, through LinkedIn mostly if you get the institutional email i'd be great and do have a chat with them try try to or you can also in, in fact you know what you can also offer your perspective and say hey this is what i would have done or i think this could be a cool idea and I think those are good ways to stand out and, and yeah, being noticed for sure. Did you have any part of the question I didn't answer? Um, I think you got just about everything. Well, there was actually okay. one thing in the middle, like uh, about what's sort of what are the skills, sort of the, yeah. the skills that are most. Mm, yeah. Uh, I So for someone who just graduated out of college, I would say some bit of data analytics and good writing skills is, I think, very good enough set of skills that you need uh, to begin your career in this field. So yeah, that's my takeaway from my experience as well. Thank you. That was very helpful. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. OK. Um, call, last call for questions here. Otherwise, we're going to wrap up. OK, all right. OK, well, thank you so much um, for joining us. And thank you, students, for coming and for your questions. Uh, we will have our next Career Series event on November 11th at 1130 AM. We'll have Trudy Bansaria. She's actually with our Epic India, um, other half of us. Um, so you'll get to see another side of Epic, and it'll be really cool. Um, so again, thank you. And if you have any additional questions, um, you can shoot me an email um, and I can get you guys in touch. And yeah, so that's it for today. Uh, this will be, the full recording will be up on our website in a few days. So if you need to come back to anything, that will be there. Um, and again, thank you so much for joining us. Awesome. Thanks everyone. Have a great day. Thanks Margaret. Enjoy the rest of your week. <laughs>